what happens after I get through with my little spill. My name is Paula Cavender. I have uh, two children that are older now. They both graduated from Tommy High School, so I have a special place in my heart at Tommy High School, and I still know a lot of the students here at Tommy High School, so it's fun to be back in Tommy. Uh, I'm the director of dual credit at Grayson College. How many of you have children in here, students you've been involved with uh, dual credit before with Grayson College? Okay, good. So those people with their hands up, if you can't get a hold of me for the others, those are the people to ask in the football stands or something if you have a question, honestly. Um, if, you know, if you just don't know, and they, they've been through it, and so that they may know the, the, the parent answer for that. I'm going to give you some information <laughs> about what the dual credit is, but I'm also going to tell you from a parent's perspective also. This is it. Miss Payne's working on it. Oh, oh, thank you. All right, you should have received the handouts. One of them is a permission form, and it says permission form at the top. That's what we use with each high school, each high school student, so that they can tell us that, yes, I'm interested in dual credit. This is where I'm from. The students will turn this form into the high school. The high school will check it over and say, yes, it's okay if the student enrolls in these classes because they need it for high school graduation. And those forms will be turned into me. These forms are kind of like people to me. Dual credit students are not required to come to the Grayson campus to enroll in classes to do anything unless they need to do something like tests or their special circumstances. Um, I firmly believe that the college enrollment process should not be standing in line at Grayson College. So I come to all of the high schools. I work with 23 high schools. I have a thousand dual credit students. But I'm the only person at the college that's under the, the dual credit. So if you ever call the college and you want to talk to dual credit, you're going to be talking to me. If you don't think you're talking to me, say, I need to talk to Paula or I need to talk to the dual credit lady, and then they will forward you to me, and I will answer any of your questions. Uh, sometimes at the college, they're used to talking to people that have been to three or four different colleges. It's just a little bit different for dual credit students. I do coddle them just a little bit, because I like for dual credit students to have a good experience while they're taking some of these college courses, so that they feel confident to go on if they go on to university or wherever they go off. They already have some knowledge, but they're not intimidated by the whole class. You'll see some of these pictures in a minute. You're going to see a Tommy grad from years ago. You can tell how many years I've been doing this. Um, that's, that's old, too. That's probably from, like, 2007. But um, what is dual credit? And so let's give you some information about that and then how Tommy works with dual credit, what they do. First of all, dual credit is when you have a, a student that's still in high school. They haven't graduated from high school. And they're taking a college course that counts as a high school course. For example, high school seniors, every high school seniors in the state of Texas have to take English 4. Freshmen have to take English 1, sophomores English 2, but English 4. In lieu of taking that English 4 class at the high school with the high school teacher, students may take the freshman college English courses and get that senior English credit for it. That's where the dual comes in. They're getting both high school credit and college credit at the same time. Tom Bean students will have the instruction for the dual credit classes, for these college classes, here on this campus. They do not have to drive out to the college to take these classes. We will actually come to them. It's in different formats, different scenarios. The English for seniors, typically, the seniors will take English in the fall. Fall is from August until December. They're going to take English and then a government. That government is also for dual credit because every high school student has to have that to graduate from high school. In the spring, they're going to take the second part of the freshman college English and economics. Now, if they want to take one or both, that's up to that's up to the high school 
to see how they schedule them. I'm just telling you what is offered in general for these students. Why would students want to take dual credit? Why in the world would they want to start college while they're still in high school? These are some of the reasons they may get a jump on their college credit. I'll tell you as a, as a mama, my favorite part about dual credit was that if I was going to send my kids off somewhere and they were going to be taking five classes, five college classes is what a full-time college student takes. <clears throat> now, high school, they may take seven or eight classes a semester. So high school students sometimes think, oh, it's a piece of cake. College classes are a little bit different. You actually have to go back and study and investigate and read on your own and find the answers, and it's not multiple choice all the time. So it really is a higher level cognitive brain they have to use their brains a lot more, they have to contemplate, they have to reflect. So college students take five. I was happy that my, my daughter started out taking one, dual credit, one college class a semester, kind of walked them through it so they, they realized the, the vocabulary that a college uses. Kind of all talk about the same things, but a college may say a syllabus, we say a schedule. Or, or you know, this, this is the calendar, or this is when things are due. Their uh, grades are a little bit different in college. Everything is electronic in the college world. When they log in and they're going to turn in an essay for that English assignment, they're going to upload it electronically. They're not just going to turn it in. So, and the instructors have control of that essay will not be turned in past midnight. It's cut off. So the students just start 10 till midnight trying to upload and everybody else is and that, that the technology may crash they may learn the hard way that it did not get uploaded by midnight and so you did not turn it in there's no makeup so, so rules like that and of course it, it's a college class it's going to be different than a high school class but that was my favorite part um, my husband's favorite part was if you'll look and on the back we have some of the prices for a community college in Texas the prices of those courses are a lot less than they are at university. Universities uh, do charge more tuition, they charge more fees. So it was an investment of one class at Grayson College in general is going to be around $260. So we were investing $260, which is a lot of money, in, in our child, then said, okay, what can you do? Let me see how you do with this. Instead of sending them straight off to university, that class, that same class is a thousand dollars. So I'm spending, I'm letting them take five at a time, and just you know hoping that they do okay. So that I like the part that I knew that they were getting the experience. My husband liked the part that hey, it's a, it's it's cheaper. Grayson tells me not to say cheaper, so say more affordable. More affordable. <laughs> Will they transfer? That's a question that we get a lot. Will those classes transfer, though? In the state of Texas, like if a student goes to Howe High School and they take, they are a freshman at Howe High School and they come over here, yeah, those classes are going to transfer for, for high school, right? Because every, every student has to take English one in the state of Texas. It's kind of like that in college. When you hear people say that they're going to go to Grayson and take their basics, what they're talking about, we're a two-year college, they're taking their first two years, their freshman and sophomore year, of a four-year college degree. So, and within the two-year basics, there's a limited amount of classes, 18 to be exact, that students can take that are part of the core, and what we call the core of any Texas education for, for college. They're gonna go walk to a state university State University. SMU is a private university. TCU is a private university. Austin College is a private university. We have an, we have an agreement with Austin College that says in all of the Texas universities, if they will take this core, these core classes will transfer. What about out of state? We have a lot, we have a lot of students, of course, that go to Southeastern. And I've not heard anybody, there may be random ones, but we have somebody from Southeastern actually on our campus. They, they will take, they'll take everything. Uh, OSU, we've not had any problems with the other the Oklahoma schools. My nephew went to uh, University of Arkansas. 
he has an upper level business classes and math classes at Grayson, and those all transferred. Both of my daughters went to Tarleton, they transferred, my niece went to UNT, and they transferred. And that's my experience with it. I don't chase them all around and ask them, but counselors usually tell me if there was a problem. I will tell you a Bible college in Missouri or Tennessee is probably, they're, they're going to fight it. They're not, they're going to say, Texas, what? You know, because they're a private school. But if it's a Texas public school, it's part of the core. This is a website that you can go to. It's in your frequently asked questions. I'll put the exact uh, web address to go to. What you do is, I don't know if you can see that back there, but you get to choose the two colleges that you're comparing. Like at Grayson College, we call it English 1301. That's the, the, the English that they would take as seniors in the fall. You, you click on Grayson English 1301, then choose that other college that you're thinking about transferring to and see what they call it. They may not call it the same thing, but this website will tell you that it's the same thing. It's, it's called a crosswalk. It means that it's all the same class. So that reference is all that. If you have any questions about that, you can always email me and ask me for all we ask about it. When I was talking about the prices, if you'll look at this, this uh, I haven't I haven't gone gone online and gotten for fall of 2016. This is for 2015. But I had the updated prices for Grayson for fall of 2016. It's going to be about $260 for a class. But this is compared. Last year I went online and I looked up all the universities. What would it cost for that class? And this is the difference. And then I looked at where the majority of our students transfer to, like the credit babies, where they, where they go to. I looked it up and so that I compared that. That is not yeah, I'm trying to sell Grayson, but it's it's not my it's not to discourage you guys. There are scholarships out there. We would never we would never uh, be lucky enough to get like a Coca-Cola scholarship or Dr. Pepper because we accumulate. <coughs> We've had the most luck with the individual university or college that, that we've attended. Universities use that as a recruiting tool. They will say, so next Especially you, you that will have seniors next year, you need to, to be looking early. If you think that you're going to transfer to another university, look and see what scholarships are available and apply. And I will tell you something that I've learned also. If, the, if your students make really good grades in those college classes, with Shailen, my oldest, and now it's happening with Maddie, Tarleton is basically just saying, here's money. Here's money. But they don't get a lot of juniors and seniors at universities. A lot of times people drop out, but if you have really good grades, they are, Maddie told me just this weekend, hey mom, I picked up $3,000 more in scholarship. And I said, when did you buy mom one day? I applied for something. So it, it, it could be luck, it could be that, you know, the, what her major is, I don't know. But uh, that has been best, best for us. So please don't get discouraged at these, these prices. Um, I'm just letting you know that, okay? But the grades are very important. Speaking of scholarships, okay, hey, we're talking about the classes for the, the price for the dual credit classes. I keep saying that one class is $260, but if the seniors want to do what typical seniors do, they take two in the fall, that first part of English, and then government. Then they take two in the spring. The spring semester is from January to early May. So that would be 260 times 2. And then in January, $260 times 2. So it is an investment if they're taking that many classes. We do have what we call, it's not really a scholarship. Grayson basically waives the fees. If students are on the free school lunch program, we waive the tuition fees for those students for up to three classes a semester. And if they're on the reduced school lunch program, we waive 50% of those tuition fees. Currently, we waive about $200,000 in the tuition fees that and every year I keep thinking, oh, you know, don't, don't kill me, don't, don't, don't turn it off, and they haven't turned it off yet. That is what we do offer. If your child has a uh, Hazelwood coming, I really don't know a lot about that, but I know how to tell you how to do it. Um, Hazelwood, you do have to contact the Grayson. We have a Veterans Affairs Center, and there's that paperwork that you have to turn in. 
that doesn't affect my part of enrolling your child. We get everything enrolled, then you get to see how much it is, and then you go and discuss it with the Veterans Affairs. And another thing that we, if you do the college uh, savings plan, it's the same way. Let, we'll get them enrolled, and then that's your responsibility to go to them and say, hey, you need to send money to the college for this tuition. Uh, Choctaw Indians also are really good about providing that. So if, if you know that you qualify, we'll get them enrolled. Once they're enrolled, you print that off. Then you go to Choctaw and you talk to them about it. We, we don't, as far as I know, we don't, we don't go out and seek that, but we will accept it and put it, put it in their account for you. There are payment plans by Playway. Um, and when, once I get students enrolled, I'll send them information about that, where you pay some down, and then they'll take out, I think, currently they're still just, they'll debit it out of your checking account. Or you can put it on credit card, whatever you want to do. Textbooks and supplies are not counted within that scholarship, though. So if they're taking cosmetology, we would pay for their tuition fees if they're on a free school lunch program. They would still need to buy that kit that has the scissors, mannequin head, or whatever is in there. Perfect. Okay, I think I, I touched on this earlier about the Texas Core. Those are some of those courses that are in that Texas Core. We also at Grayson College for dual credit. We have some. I'm sorry, I'm standing right there. Oh, that. Okay. Okay, okay. The yeah, other six slides. Technical courses. We have a lot of technical courses there. What these technical courses are, we're to your college. We have some of those straight to workforce uh, programs that start with you can go six months in some of them and get a certificate and go to work with that. Or you can stay in, get, get, get another certificate and part of a degree, go to work, make more money. You know, every step you go up, you make more money. These are some of those options that we have. Criminal justice is uh, online, but what you would do with dual credit with that is it just basically opens you up to where you can transfer to university and be a probation officer, do that route, or it also prepares you if you want to go straight into law enforcement, that there are a multitude of other options that this prepares you for. The very first class is the study fundamentals of law which I'm thinking, golly, that should be required for everybody, we should all know the laws, but it's just, that's just an introductory to the world of criminal justice, and so we have a lot of students that take that, um, and then, then they can go whichever way they want to. EMT is on here, I will tell you, we don't have it on our schedule for straight dual credit, and the reason is they have to be 18 before they can sit for that test at the end. And if we have some that maybe don't turn 18 until August after they graduate, we don't want them to forget some of that stuff. Hopefully they know it deep enough. But if they didn't, then we want them to be prepared. And also, because they are in hospitals for clinicals, the very first semester, and it is just a nightmare trying to schedule a high school schedule. These classes plus them being in the hospital, I mean, you may have, we may have them going at 4.30 in the morning in the hospital and they come to school. It's just really not the best situation for students. What's the criteria for, for this? Okay, we talked about what it is, what it costs. What, if we decide that we want to do it, how do we get there? In the state of Texas, we have to prove that we're, we're ready for college. The state of Texas, when they revamped a long time ago, uh, we went what it costs to tax even. The state of Texas has revamped the curriculum several times, but this led to what the state of Texas called the Texas Success Initiative. When they started telling businesses, hey, move here, work too, because they're moving here. Businesses move here because we're going to have this curriculum aligned with uh, the students that are going to be ready, they're going to be college ready, and they're going to be able to, to do anything you ask them to do. Mathematically, they're going to be right, they're not going to LOL anymore. It's kind of work. Um, so to take dual credit, we have a little bit of an umbrella where they don't have to meet the strict, strict guidelines that regular college freshmen have to meet. 
but there are still state state law guidelines that they do have to meet to take dual credit classes. The first and easiest one, the one that nobody else but a high school student can use, is how they do on their English 2 star in the course. If they met that level 2, which is like an advanced now, if they met that and the state of Texas says, okay, they're a good enough student, we think that they're on track, they're going to be able to take a college ready class. If they don't take dual credit with that and they wait until they graduate from high school, they can't use that English too anymore. They have to satisfy with the ACT or SAT um, or there's a test at the college. But so that that's okay. So we have sophomores in here that are thinking about taking dual credit next year. Did y'all ever take your English? Please have enough the other one. Do really well. <laughs> <laughs> that way it leaves you open. Okay, so with dual credit. In Texas, in Texas to be college ready, you have to be able to say that you can read, you can write, and you can do math. For dual credit purposes only, if you just want to take any courses but a math, we're just going to concentrate, can you read and can you write? Now, why would we do that? Because a lot of students may take us a junior and they haven't had Algebra 2. Well, why would you take College Algebra 1 if you haven't had High School Algebra 2 yet? So we know that they're developed faster in the reading and the writing usually, some of them aren't, but in general they are, so they can take any class but a mathematics class if they met that English 2 in the course level. Parents, you don't have to worry about that. Where's Ms. Chapman at? And Coach Ashlock's here. Okay, we're going to work and look at those, and isn't that what we agreed on? <laughs> yes. And we'll let your, your students know, and we won't announce it to the whole world like that, but um, we'll let them know individually if, hey, they, you know, they may need to do something. If you have a, a junior in here that already took history, odds are they're probably going to be good for the English. I talked to a couple, I know from Tom Bean, and I don't remember who they were, and I'll talk to Emily about that last year, that they passed the reading part, or they, they were good on the reading, and uh, so they may have to go back for TSI, but I'll, that's technical, you don't even know about that right now. Okay. If a child wants to take the math, college algebra, and I would highly suggest that they've been a really strong math student, do really well in algebra two, hopefully maybe if we enrolled in the uh, pre-cal right now, if they want to take it as a senior, they can take algebra, the college algebra class, and they can use their algebra one in the course exam, way back from forever ago which is awesome. I hope the state doesn't change it because we can use that. So those are the scores they can use. Now, if they don't need it, that's okay. Then we're going to go, if they took an ACT or SAT, we'll look at those standards. If they didn't do it then, then there's a test at the college that they can take. If they only want to take an English class and we decide they need a test, they can go to the college and they can just take the reading and the writing portion of that test. They can take all three, the reading, writing, math, if they want to. But they can take the reading and writing and need it, and then we'll enroll them in those classes. Then they can worry about the math after they graduate from high school. The testing part's kind of confusing. Confusing. That on the permission form, there's a grid that kind of that shows what they must meet. They only have to meet one of those testing standards. They don't have to meet several. So that's on there. But honestly, the school will be able to. to to look at it and figure it out and tell your student. If your child wants to take one of those technical courses that we were talking about, those are offered, except for criminal justice is online. The others are offered at our campus in Denison. And those would require proof of meningitis immunization. State law, not a racing law, drives me crazy. But in the men meningitis immunization has to be within the last five years. Most of the time they had it in the seventh grade. But we would have to look at that and make sure that, like, if they got it in September of the seventh grade, it might be old by the time they were a, a senior or something. So, and any college freshman has to have that proof of that meningitis immunization before they set foot on a Texas campus. I guess they go southeastern and not be in the <laughs> How are grades? So that's how that that's how they're they're going to get in with those testing with the the test. 
They also have to apply to college. Forgot that very important part. Anytime you can go anywhere, you got to tell them that you're going there. I'm going to come to Tom Bean, and I will help the students do that. So we'll help them do that. We'll look at the test scores to help them. Now, regular college freshmen, they would have to go into the college and, and figure this out in May. So we're trying to help them. We want it to be a good experience for them. Okay, final grades. If you've ever been to college and looked at a college report card, you only get letter grades. But in high school, we need that GPA, right? So what we do at Grayson, we will provide the high school number grades at midterm. That's middle of the term. The term is August to September. So around October, we'll provide the school midterm grades and say this is how they're doing. And then at the final, we'll give them final grades that are number grades. It may be a 99 here. It's still an A at Grayson. So they'll have a Grayson report card transcript. It's called transcript and the high school transcript. Once they graduate from high school, we're going to get that high school transcript and fill in, fill in that check box at Grayson. And then students will have completed a college transcript that if they go to university or whatever, they would have that sent to that university. And it's going to show their college classes on the high school transcript. <coughs> It's going to show that they, they, they took an English 4, that, that it, it counted as an English 4. I think it had a D or something by it for credit, but it really won't mean anything. What's going to mean something really is that college transcript that proves that they took that course and what they made. So they will be working on two separate transcripts. Fully. So the steps to enrollment, you probably can't see it right there, and they made this bigger. Step one, first of all, Students need to apply to the college, and then placement testing. We need to make sure that their testing is good, or that they're college ready for testing. It says student right here. We will help them. But well, we're not going to take the test for them, but we're going to help them by finding out. I'm going to help them apply, and then we're going to look at their test scores to see, to make sure that they're good to go. What you need to turn in to the school, this is the parent and student responsibility. That permission form that you have, that has to be signed by the student. And please put, like, you know, when you do your email, make it so I can read it, guys, because I do use that. Um, especially if I have a problem and I need to ask you a question, I'll email the students. Last resort, I'll call them. But um, I like to email. It's quicker because I can send links and uh, get the information out. Uh, the high school's then going to look at that form, check it off. The high school's going to sign off, then they're going to give it to me. That's the process. If you come up to Grayson this summer and you say, I'm supposed to be enrolled in English, I want to pay, I'm going to say, hmm, I didn't get a form from the school. Are you sure you turned in a form? Well, no, we didn't, but we want to enroll. I'm going to say, here's a blank form. You need to go get it. You need to go get permission from the high school because they need to know that that you want to have a picture schedule for the high school. They need to know, and they're probably going to have those test scores and everything that I need also. Okay, step three, I'm going to get that big old stack of forms. I'm going to take them back to Grayson, and I'm going to go through and make sure there are no holds on the students. And that's we do typos when we're typing in our address. And I'm going to, I'll work with the patients to get all of that cleaned up. I will enroll each of them. Then I'm going to email them and let them know, hey, you're enrolled. This is what you need to do next. And the students are going to get sick of me saying this, but I'm going to hammer out of you. My heart, my feelings, if you don't think about me in August, when everybody starts getting their school clothes, tax free shopping, band camp, volleyball two days, football two days, think, oh, wow, I need to make sure I'm enrolled in dual credit. I remember I turned in my form, and I, I need to see what I need to do. Because the first day of college class at Grayson, the first day that we start here at Tom Bean. So there's no time, you're in class, so there's no time to leave and, you know, see if you can fix the problem. It's too late at that point. And your counselor in high school is closed a lot during the summer. I'm at Grayson during the summer. I'm going to be contacting the students if I need anything from you. Do it by planes, trains, and automobiles. I call. I will uh, email. I will send letters. I have postcards. Anything trying to get I just want to be sure Tom in the first day and say, well, I thought I was supposed to be in class. It's going to be too late at that point. So right now, that's what we're doing all this right now. It seems early. 
we have to get all of this done by now. Alright. So I'm going to contact you once you're enrolled, and then students, it's going to be your responsibility to make sure that it's paid and that you have the right textbooks. I'll also send you a list of textbooks this summer. I will send send you a lot of information. I don't want larger with information, but I will send you information. And I usually start at the end of July and August sending it out then because I don't want to get let it get buried in a bunch of stuff either. The emails, but you can always call me. Any questions over that process? Ms. Chapman, do you have any questions? Yes. So on the step one, apply to the college at LiveTexas.org. If they're already in dual credit, do we have good to question. do that again? No. Very good question. If they're currently enrolled in the spring, they're already accepted their current student at Grayson. If they took in the fall and didn't take in the spring, I'll have to reapply with them. So do they, but they still have to fill out this purple? I still need that form because that's off their body. Okay. Yeah. But if you've already applied, see with the top right where it says new or was it say new or I took dual credit last year? Yeah. That's if you took dual credit last year. I like those because I, there's a lot less work for me on that. Because I do push through the system. And I'll look at that and I'll think, oh boy, I just didn't roll these right there. So that's a very good question. They've already applied and are attending right now during the spring. They don't have to be applied for the fall. Probably won't have to do test scores if they're enrolled in history right now for the English government and economics. Probably not. But we'll figure that out for sure. On the back of the frequently asked question form, this is optional, but I think for a lot of people I know that talk to them, just remind, remind us it's free for education. It may say on there, it may charge you, but it's not supposed to. But you can sign up, parents, you can sign up for the email listserv, the text um, students. If you do sign up for the text, put the first and last name, because I already have like 20 Jessicas. I'm like, ah, oh, they didn't put their last name. I don't know how to get a hold of them. But that's just another way that I'm going to try to get a hold of you. I'm also going to email you also a little bit. Sometimes stuff happens if we go to junk mail or whatever. So I will ask you to be able to do that tonight. Do it whenever it's convenient for you. But I, that's my way of getting a hold of you guys. Or you've got to be active this summer and call me if you have any questions. Kind of good. Kind of cool. okay. Eight minutes long, right? Are we good? That's all I have. Um, one thing that just, and I'm, just because Emily, this is her, her first one, her first one with me, and it made me feel, oh, she said she took no credit in high school. That makes me feel like a grandma. <laughs> I need mean, her. Um, if your child gets enrolled in a class, because we're using this for college, I mean, high school credit, they're getting credit for those credits they need to graduate. Let's say something happens, life happens. Sometimes we get in over our head. We'll work, we'll get that student dropped, and then we will schedule them into another class here at the high school. Let's say they're a senior and the, the English is just too much. Football, essays, it's just too much. They don't get English. We'll put them in a high school English class so they get that English full of credit because our number one goal is for them to graduate from high school. They can take college forever. But we want to graduate from high school first. That's our number one goal. So we will work with them on that. Depending on when they drop, you might get some of the money back. Hopefully that won't happen. I will tell you that my dual credit students, I said I had a thousand. We have about four thousand students at Grayson College, so out of fourth of the enrollment. My GPA is higher, students do better, they finish the class more often than other students, so I think that the high schools have the smartest, best kids. And so it, it, it's a good experience if your child's ready, because it will give them a good taste of what college is and good GPA to start out on springboard time. Okay. First of all, I just want to thank all of y'all for coming. I know that you're giving your precious time and the evenings with your family. Some of you came last year, and I know you asked, should I come again? I had never been through this. I don't know if we learned anything new, but I just wanted to feel comfortable knowing that if there was something new out there that wasn't available last year, that you had all of the opportunities um, available to you. And Ms. Cavender is wonderful, so if you had any questions about any of the programs, uh, she would be the lady to know the answers. 
Um, and the same thing with the math class for the senior. That's going to be an online class as well. Uh, and we talked about, like, for seniors that are going to take all of them, uh, we talked about doing, uh, what is it, government and economics? That's the one, right? Okay, and that Friday we talked about, okay. about the Friday that you would have off, if you wanted to do the math class, we could have you all in the room doing that so that you don't feel like you're on your own. We'll have a, you know, a certified teacher, maybe not a math teacher, but somebody there with you kind of walking you through all of that. Did that answer the question? So these those two classes are doing? American history and maybe the science, depending on your child. So definitely American history and then um, the dual credit biology would be something to consider. Yeah, a lot of those, like speech, other extra classes, those are going to be online. So that would just be up to, we have tons of those. And so that would be up to the high school saying, yes, they can take that. And then the student to, to take it and to, to look up, to log in every day and really complete that work. The online is a little scary. Or if you have to tell your child to get out of bed five times in the morning, I might, might not be the best option. <laughs> the truth, because they, you know, you've got some that are go-getters and they'll do it and they'll kill themselves not getting any sleep because they're doing that. But I mean, just be careful with that. These are college, they're different for college classes. And I will stress, Bobby Kathy Harris is fantastic. She was one of the teacher. I hate it that we lost her here. She, we will schedule that online biology, and I told her that the Tongan kids, I, she's always taught an online class, I always put high, other high school kids in there with her, because I know she gets them, that doesn't I mean it's easy. And she's not going to be here five days a week teaching them, it's going to be online, it's going to be a little bit different for them, and it may be a shocker. I have a few students that take online biology from random high schools, and it's only like two or three from each high school because it's only those kids that are really going to buckle down. Somebody's playing football or a band and doing a lot of things. And that biology, biology is learning a new language because you're learning, learning all of that new vocabulary plus concepts. It's tough. Anywhere. So just, I don't want to discourage you, but we also want to make a good investment. And if there is something you're serious about taking, I think there's also a psychology and social Yeah, and there's other classes. classes. <laughs> uh, and, and it's something you want to look into. If you will just see Coach uh, Ashlaw with me at some point, uh, we will look and kind of walk your individualized, have a little session with you individually and kind of figure out, well, this is what you want to do with your career. This is why you want to take this. How serious are you? This is what it's going to look like. Um, and just kind of try to guide you through making that. And one thing, when Coach Ashlock, actually, this was his input. It was a great input, I forgot to say. When I said earlier that in college you have to log in and students, everything, basically, they may have discussions, but it is all online and it's like a little chat room for the class. But parents, you can get access to that and look at their grades and see when things are due. Print off that syllabus, <coughs> print it off. Legally, you know, kind of like with the health, with HIPAA, can't like, you know, unless you put somebody's name down at the doctor's office, they can't discuss your health problems. It's the same way when they go to college. It doesn't matter if they're 13 and they're in college. The, we, there's a, a federal law, it's called FERPA, it's Educational Rights and Privacy Act. <coughs> we can't call and as you as a parent, like we can at a high school, and say, so-and-so didn't log in, so-and-so wasn't in class, they didn't, haven't turned in the last two papers. We cannot do that. You can see it. You can break the purple law, but I can't. Because you can give their login information and look in and make sure they're on schedule. A lot of times, the, the counselor may, I mean, the, the, the college instructor may tell me, and then I can hint it to the high school, and then the high school can get on. But that's how we get around it a little bit. But it is, it's, we cannot address it like we would at a high school. Boy, they missed a couple uh, assignments. We would be on them like that. College is not like that. Well, they're taking college classes and they're paying for them, and so the stakes are higher, so they're, they're more responsible for that. Can I, can I add to that? Sorry. Um, along with my, uh, Ms. Kavanaugh did email me a couple of times just with my uh, tuition was due, and I 
I get the email, we are purging roll, and if they don't pay, they will no longer be in this class. So I had to call them down to the office and say, I'm sorry, Ms. Chapman, if you don't pay, you will not be in this class as of today. And I had one, I mean, four or five kids calling parents, oh, you forgot to pay tuition, you forgot to pay tuition. So there is that communication, it's, as you were saying earlier, it's kind of a gap between jumping off and going to the big university and being in high school. There is communication, but we're limited on what we can and cannot say because you're treated as adult in the public class. So you can contact us, but as far as the, you contact the professor, they're not going to talk to you either way. So, I'm sorry. I was more than to tell that. Any other questions? Yes. Um, if you are accepted and you actually go in and your test scores are high enough and you're actually accepted, is there a way that you can actually take summer courses to fast track? We talked about that. Um, and we decided against it this year. And it's only really because of this. Um, it's difficult for us to make sure in the summer when we're not here that the student is enrolled and doing well. Um, and so that was something we were a little bit uncomfortable with doing, at least until we felt more comfortable with all these new opportunities we're offering through this. Um, it could be something that maybe we could discuss with Dr. Foster and, and just make sure, but we were really leaning towards no. But um, we'll get back to questions later or their individual personal questions, uh, we'll hang around for just a few minutes. Otherwise, um, you can email, you can call the front office and I will return those phone calls as soon as possible. Thank you all for coming.